So this is Brother Mills, and uh, let's see here. Hang on a second. Got ten. There it goes. That's working. Yes, sir. Let's try it. Okay. Take number three. This is take number three. All right. Uh, good to have Brother Eddie Mills with us. His wife Cindy. They're uh, missionaries to China. Been there for uh, over twenty-five years. Starting twenty-eighth year. Twenty-eight years, and we've been supporting them a lot of that time, not all that time. And uh, so we're glad to have him and his wife here with us today. He's going to preach to us this morning. Yeah. Now I'm going to be showing you how to read some Chinese words in the, in the uh, Chinese language is the hidden story of Genesis. Now I've done this maybe 10 years ago. Does anybody remember this? Or yeah. Do you? Okay. And I'm not sure what year it was, but it's been a while. And the pastor has to go ahead and do it again. But I've got some new characters in there, so it won't be the same ones. But a lot of people will ask me, you know, how do you witness to the Chinese people? You know, how do you, you know, reach, you know, people group who's never had a foundational truth of the gospel? Like if you go to Germany, you go to France, or you go to Spain, or you go to Mexico, or you go to the Philippines, you know, they've got a Bible knowledge there. It's just not according to righteousness. You know, they, they worship, of course, the, you know, Virgin Mary, things like that. But they, but they're, at least they're familiar with the Bible. Now, when you go to a lot of these Asian cultures, there's no familiarity with the Bible whatsoever. And so when God said something here, and... Can y'all see that on that side over there? I think you can, no problem. But notice there, he says, you know, become fishers. I need to move the flag. Can everybody see around the flag? Yeah. I love you. Let me see. The platform, I have to pull the flag all the way around. Does he come out of the way? It says, you know, Jesus said to them, come yet to me, and I'll make you to what? To become fishers of men. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a very important word, to become fishers of men. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning with the Chinese language and how the hidden story of Genesis is inside that language. When you go to a new culture, a lot of times you have to learn to become fishers of men. What I'm going to show you is something I did not know when I first arrived. I knew how to be, be a fisher of men here. I knew how to do it in the jails and, and the juvenile facilities. I had to make some changes in the presentation there. But you know, really the message of God never changes, but the method of how you present it can change. Now, I'll give you an example. Now, we all know John 3.16, right? Mm -hmm. What's the second word in John 3.16? God. All right? When we talk about God, and we, you go to a culture who's never had the Bible before, who never had a foundation in Bible truth, and you say, for God, so right when you get to the second word, you've got some difficulties for their receiver. You see, when we talk about something, we've got everything filed away in the right you know, filing cabinet, the right drawer, all that kind of stuff. And as we're giving truth out, we think everybody understands what we're saying because it's, you know, it's filed in the right places for us. Just because it's in your right folder doesn't mean it's going to get in their right folder. Right. That's where we're struggling in America. We think whatever truth is, if, especially if we go through the great detail of breaking it down to the finest point, they're going to understand it. No, they're not necessarily going to understand it. And the reason and how I can prove this to you you know, in the Old Testament, how many thousands of years was the Old Testament before the Gospels were written? The Old Testament covered how many uh, thousands of years? 4,000. 4,000 years. They had four, Israel had 4,000 years of history of prophets prophesying of what was to come, the Messiah was to come. All right, when Jesus came and fulfilled all the prophecies, could Israel understand it? Even with 4,000 years of history, they failed to understand it. Now we're going to go to a culture like China who's got 4,000 years of history and we expect them to understand something that we're saying and that we grew up understanding and we just think they're going to understand it because we're giving it to them. That's not being a fisher of men. You've got to learn how to become a fisher of men there and you've got to be able to relate some things to them. Uh, and see, what they'll say, uh, Mr. Mills, uh, you're... Christ, or your God, came here 2,000 years ago, right? And you'll say, of course, it's 2020, so it's about 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. They say, we was here 2,000 years before your Christ came. If we was here 2,000 years before your God showed up, why would we want to believe your God who came 2,000 years late? Many cultures are like that when you go overseas, especially in the 1040 window. If you go to Africa, you go to Egypt, they was here thousands of years before Christ ever came. They see their culture as older than our God. Now, we know Christ is eternal. We know he did not have a beginning 2,000 years ago. 
but yet we don't know how to present a truth to them so they'll realize, yes, Christ didn't come to about 2,000 years ago, but first some things had to be fulfilled, some things had to happen in the Old Testament for him to come. And so as we're talking to these other cultures that are older, a lot of missionaries fail to realize how to jump over that barrier. Well, that's right. You were here before Christ. Oh, no, what do I tell them? They didn't teach me this in Bible school. <laughs> and really, it's not that difficult. But anyway, so as you're dealing with the Chinese people, you say, for God so loved the world. Okay, you've got a problem. they got a kitchen God. they got a door God. they got a money God. they got a moon God. So when you're talking about all about for God so loved the world, they're saying, whoa, which one is he talking about? Maybe that's my moon God. Maybe that's my... See, you're thinking, they're understanding everything you're saying about God, and really in their mind it's racing. Hmm, God, 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 God. Which one, which one, which one? For God so loved the what? The world. Oh, your God loves anybody? Our God loves us specifically. We've got Chinese gods, and they care about us very directly. For God so loved the world, and he did what? Gave his only, how, long, how many years did China have a one child policy, an only child? Mm. You talk about a God who's willing to give up their son, they'll kind of take their son and say, your God's crazy. And they'll walk away with their one child. See, everything that seems so basic and so easy to us really does not convey to them. But we think, well, the word of God's quick, powerful, sharp, and any two-edged sword, right? It's going to go in there and cut, you know. Folks, there's got to be a foundational truth for the Word of God can have an effect in a person's life. You know what? America's becoming fast like a mission field. You can give a simple Bible test to these college, I mean, even high school kids or grammar school kids, elementary school kids, or even college kids. They can't tell you who Moses is. They can't tell you who Abraham is. They can't tell you any of the Old Testament stories. And then you're wondering why John 3.16 has no effect. We can't start with the Gospels anymore. You're going to have to go back to Genesis and lay a foundation and bring them up to Christ. Mm -hmm. If you don't build a foundation, they're not going to understand it. So in China, we show them how to, you know, God said, uh, how to become fishers of men. Now what we'll do, I'll write this one word and I'll, I'll start showing them some things about their language. Now to you, that looks like what? It's chicken scratch, right? You just scratch the ground, that's it. All right? Now, I'm going to ask a question. Remember God said, I make you fishers of men. All right? When you cast a pole in a line, you do this number. Why? Yeah, you want to tease them. Kind of. You're interested in that bait. You... And... Right? All right? I'm asking them questions. I'm throwing that question out there, and I start asking questions about it. I'm doing this number. I know the answers. I'm not searching for an answer. I know the answer. I ask them, how old is your language? And they'll say about 4,000 years. The reason I ask that, because I've got to get them to realize their fathers knew something 4,000 years ago before there ever was America. Oh, yeah. How old is America? Uh, yeah, 240 what? Was it 44? I'll give me math real quick. You know, 1776 from now, it's, two, it's about, you know, it's coming in July, it'll be 244 years. You realize we're a young country? Oh, yeah. The rest of the world sees us as a country still in diapers. Mm -hmm. They're thousands of years old, and here we are, just a couple hundred years old, we're already running the world, you know. They don't understand that. So I say, how old is your, your language? 4,000 years old. See, I've got them committed to something. All right? How old is America? Oh, we're very young. You're very old. All right? Are these random marks? They'll say, no, Mr. Mills, these are not random marks. Our language is a picture language. It illustrates the truth that our fathers understood. Oh, your fathers understood this? Yes, Mr. Mills, our fathers understood. It's a picture language. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this word down in a minute, and part by part, you're going to very easily see the Genesis story. And so I ask them, how old is their language? Is it random marks? And they'll say it's not. It's a picture of language. These are questions that must be asked so they can commit themselves to something. Now, once they've committed, now they're, they're somewhat on the hook already. Then they'll realize this is not from America. Most people see missionaries as bringing a Western religion to them. And they, to be great like America, they got to believe in American religion. 
lot of them, a lot of places around the world are doing it for one reason. They're looking for the money. They're looking for their economics. They're looking for a blessing upon their country like America has if they adopt an American religion. Christianity is not an American religion. Mm -hmm. Now, I hate to say it, it's fast becoming just an American religion. Everybody knows what to do, when to do, how to do, and what to do. But you know what? That's, that's just getting rituals. Mm -hmm. Can a Baptist church have as many rituals as a Catholic church? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we're not careful, you'll get ritualistic in your worship, and you'll know what to do, when to do it, and you know what's supposed to be said at this time, what's supposed to be said at that time. If you're not careful, your belief, you can get very ritualistic. And it just becomes a ritual. It's Sunday morning. It's time to go to church. It's Sunday school time. It's time to do this. It's offering time. It's shaking hands time. And, and you know, really, all those things have a purpose, which is good. But you've got to always realize the purpose of it and not just let it become a habit with no purpose. Right. And that's the difference. You can't let something become a habit with no purpose to it. When you get up and shake somebody's hand, there's a purpose to that. And it needs to be a real purpose. Mm -hmm. When you, you welcome somebody, it needs to be a purpose to that. When you give an offering, there needs to be a purpose to that. It's not that I'm just doing it to watch this. No. You're doing it because there's something in your heart and you want to illustrate to God what it is that you're doing. Amen. And if you'll keep that, church will never become a routine to you, a ritualistic. Now, folks, if church starts becoming just routine to you, it ain't his fault. It ain't my fault. It ain't the church's fault. It's your fault. We got to start taking ownership of our Christian life. Amen. If we don't take ownership of it and realize it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. If we don't start doing that, America's doomed. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, it's always somebody else's fault for something, but it's never my fault. Mm -hmm. And we start realizing what's happening in America, that's our fault. Don't blame. We can't just blame what's happening on this TV channel, that TV channel, that politician. That, no. Really, if the church gets back to preaching like it's supposed to be, and I told you the body of Christ, which is, you know, everywhere, if we'll get back to that old-fashioned way, America will clean up. Mm -hmm. All right? Amen. So, I've got them committed, and I'll write this word out, and, and usually somebody I'll know, and I've been, you know, talking with things, and I'll say, now, why did your fathers form this word this way? And they say, well, our fathers had a purpose. We know this word means something. Now, remember, my goal is to reach them for Christ. So I'm going to show them something that they know. They know this word, but they've never seen it broke down in different pieces. And then when I start asking them questions, remember, I'm doing this. I'm doing this here. Now, why did your fathers do this? And I've got to get them committed to realize this is what their fathers did. And once they realize this is what their fathers did, they know it's not an American trying to just import some kind of Western religion that they must adopt to be you know, famous in the world or whatever, they'll start realizing, well, my fathers knew this. And that was 4,000 years ago. And so, so I'll write this word out, and this is the word uh, create. I look at Genesis 2, 7. Now, instead of taking someone down the Romans road, I take them down the Genesis road. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, if you're starting the Genesis road with them, and really, this is what, believe it or not, you're going to have to do here in America nowadays. You're going to take someone down the Genesis road. Amen. You're going to show them the Bible truth from the beginning. Right. They don't understand New Testament truths. If they don't understand New Testament truth, you don't begin with New Testament. You begin with the Old Testament. Your Old Testament lays the foundation. Yeah. With no foundation, there's nothing you can, you can show them. Right. You're going to have to begin a lot of basic things with most of the average families in, in, in America today. They don't need a lot of deep <laughs> truth. They need the basics. Mm -hmm. If we get back to the basics, people get excited, people get excited about church again. And right now, to keep people in church, they, they depend on excitement. They depend on the music and the loud, the bright lights and the loud music and the shouting. That gives you that dopamine high, you know, and you go home, oh, that was good, that was good. And then about a day or two later, I still got nothing. You're going to have to start giving them something that they can deal with, and it's going to be basic foundational truth. Okay, Genesis 2, 7. Now, I'll read this for y'all right now, but I don't read the verse first. When I'm talking to them, if you're a Chinese, I'll write this word, 
And I'll say, why did your fathers form this word this way? And they say, again, this is a picture language. This is something my fathers knew. And I'll start breaking it apart for them. How many of y'all can draw a plus mark on a line? <laughs> Easy, right? That's the word dust. Now, why do you think dust is inside the word create? I see, you know. You grew up in Sunday school. You grew up in vacation Bible school. You grew up in church. You've known the story of creation and dust probably your whole life, right? See, I can show that to a Chinese person and he'll, uh, I don't know. But if my father's put it there, there's a reason. They'll acknowledge that much. See, they never looked at the, the word individually. I mean, you can draw a box. That's the Chinese word for mouth. So in there we've got the word dust and mouth. And I said, and I'll ask him again. Remember, I know the answer. I'm not looking for the answer. I know the answer. I'm doing what? God said, I make you fishers of men. Why did your fathers do this? Why is dust in there? Why is mouth in there? I'm fishing. You know what? If you're going to catch some fish, you've got to learn to go fishing. Find a verse and work on that verse and, and start asking your friends, now why did God write John 3, if they, if they know enough about church? Now look at John 3, 16 in the Bible. You ever thought about that? Not just what it says, but what it means. You know, it starts out for, if you start just breaking it down, but you gotta just ask some simple questions and give them a chance to respond. Don't sit there and preach to them for 15 minutes and, and they're going, you know, ask them questions. Make them answer. Have not make them, let them answer. All right. All right. Now, if you take dust and mouth and put it together, they add a little apostrophe there, and that becomes the word talk. Can y'all see that over there? Or is that flag still in the way? Yeah. And then the next word is a little curvy L off the side, and that's the ability to walk. Now, I'll ask that Chinese person, why, why did your fathers use these four parts to form the word create? And they'll say, well, we know our fathers knew something. They said, because of the many wars that we've had, many libraries that were destroyed, many books that were destroyed, we've lost a lot of the stories that we've had because they've had dozens of civil wars throughout 4,000 years. They said, we just don't know what our fathers knew. And I said, well, I've got a book. I've got a book that can tell you what your fathers knew. And they'll say, what book is it? And I said, it's a book called the Bible. And they'll kind of grin and, oh, yeah, you Westerners think the Bible's got to answer for everything. And I said, would you like to see it? And they'll say, yes. Why did they want to see it? What's well, a forbidden book. It's somewhat, for a while, it was a forbidden book back in the 90s. It's not so much a forbidden book now. So since it's something they hadn't seen, they want to see it. And so we look at Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed his nostrils, breath of life. Man became what? A living soul. And I'll show them, say, hey, your fathers knew what God's greatest creation was. It was not the sun, moon, and stars. God's greatest creation was what? Because man. man's made in the... Amen. Of God. You see, the devil knew what to destroy at the very beginning. He's got to start in Genesis. That's why evolution is so strongly taught today. He's got to destroy that very first verse. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. See, if he gets you messed up on the very first verse, he's got you through the rest of the Bible. So, they, so there's things about creation the devil must attack. And so they look at this and they say, I say, God's greatest creation is not the sun, moon, and stars. God's greatest creation is man that's made in the dust, man has a mouth, man can talk, man can walk. They are. The mouth will fall to the floor. But Mr. Mills, this is from America. Oh, George Washington was there 4,000 years ago helping your fathers form their language. They have to do what? And it about breaks their neck to go. Because they've been taught this is from America. But if their fathers knew it first, it ain't from America. Right. See, I don't have to tell them they've been lied to. They're not going to call their ancestors a liar. Mm -hmm. They'll look at that and, and it, it's a shock, folks. I can't express to you what a shock it is for them to see that this is something their fathers knew 4,000 years ago. And this is not from America. See, they've been totally brainwashed. This is from America. you got to be careful. America wants to go out there and spread this lies all over the world. That way you can, America can get you to you know, be part of their system or whatever. 
They want to make this a political message almost. They're trying to get you brainwashed to where you follow their Christ. We don't want you to follow their Christ. We want you to follow the Chinese God, the dragon, you know. And so there's many things that they, they've been taught. But when they see that, wait a minute, their fathers knew something. You mean somebody's been lying to me? Somebody's been trying to deceive me? Somebody's been trying to pull the wool over my eyes? Now, sometimes I can only show them one. And that's fine. I stop there. Sometimes I can show them two. You got to be attentive. If they can receive more, you give more. If they can't receive more, you stop. Now, sometimes they'll say, well, you know, Mr. Mills, that's just a coincidence. Now, folks, let me ask you, is that a coincidence? No. no. You know, of course, you know it's not. See, you, you can, you've got enough Bible teaching and understanding. You know there's no coincidence to it. And I can't wait till they say that it's a coincidence. This is just a coincidence, Mr. Mills. Now, I said, well, how many more would it take to prove to you it's not a coincidence? They'll say, oh, there's three or four more. Be, oh, okay. This is Genesis 2.8. Genesis 2, and said, go down the Romans road. And the Lord God planted a garden each word even there he put the man who had formed. Now this is the word for garden. And now what's that word there? Dust. Dust. So you already learned Chinese. There's dust up there. What's, what's the next one? Mouth. Mouth. Look at that. You're eating. All right. Now, what's this one? Now look at Genesis 2, 8 and just take a stab at it. Garden. garden. Now the whole word is garden. This, this is garden. Plant. 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 Now look at the... Keep looking, keep trying. It's, it's going to be something to do with that verse there. And the Lord God planted the garden each were eating there he put. Man, this is, okay, now what happens is, uh, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, one Y that's on this upside down like that is person. Now if you take the, uh, tilt it to the side a little bit and add another Y to a side. How many people are in the garden? Yeah. And so that's two people. Adam and Eve. And so one is, the, the outside box on, on, on the outside of this is being closed area. So now you've got four parts to create. Now you've got four parts to garden. You know, dust, mouth, you know, two people in an enclosed area. That's eight parts. Is that a coincidence? Again, when Chinese see it, but Mr. Mills, this is from America. All I've got to do is say, wait a minute, if this is from America, how old, how old is America? How old is Chinese? Was George Washington in there helping you form your language? Who knew it first? They did. They'll look at that, and again, this is just like a punch in the bread basket for them. They're struggling. Now, folks, how many of you like, you like to be lied to? None of us. When you find out you've been lied to, how do you feel? Yeah. I know what they're struggling with, and I've got to be careful. God said, I'll show you how to become fishers of men. When you present a truth to somebody, don't rub it in their face if, they, if they're seeing it. You should have known this. How dare you not know this? Your father's left you something there for 4,000 years, and you couldn't see that? If I do that, what happened to my fish? <coughs> Will I ever catch them? Don't scare the fish off. Just because you realize the truth, don't rub it in somebody's face that they don't know the truth. I've got to treat this very carefully. They've got a great love for their country, and they should have a great love for their country. Now, just because your history's been rewritten and they don't know their history, I don't smear it in their face. You know what? We got the same thing happening here in America. Amen. We don't know history. Right. A lot of people believe everything that CNN says. They can say anything and people's going to believe it. One day, if God tarries his coming, he might have to send some Chinese over here to show, hey, years ago a missionary came and showed me stuff about, let me show you something about your, your, your heritage that you lost. They might be sending missionaries here to make churches one day if we fall. Think about that. Are we any better than Israel? Israel fell. 
I don't think the church can. I'll write these two. That's the word create, the word garden. And you can see the struggle. Just got to be careful. Be patient. If you're on that boat and you get too excited and you start shaking that rod, ah, I got a fish, got a fish, got a fish. What happened? Gone. Gone. You're on that boat. Look, 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 look. Gone. You just got to sit there, all right? Your fathers knew something. What do you think about your fathers? They got to say what? Hey, man, my fathers are something. They can't go, yeah, my fathers are stupid. <laughs> they got these, uh, hey, man, that's, my fathers are that's pretty cool. All right, now, again, sometimes you can just go one character. Sometimes you can go two characters. If you can go to the third, usually you've got them. Look at verse 9. Now the ground made, <clears throat> and now the ground uh, made the Lord uh, God to grow every tree that's pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of, the, uh, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We know about these two trees. Now, verse 17, God does something. He said, But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, but they thou eatest there, thou shalt surely die. God said, You eat this fruit, you're going to die. All right, now this is the word forbid. The first time God forbid man to not do something it was very simple, it was right there in the garden, and it had to do with the, this tree. So what do you think those two things are? Trees. 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 This bottom part here, like Jay with the hat and whiskers, the word warn. You put warn and trees together, that makes the word forbid. The first time God forbid man to do something was to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's two parts. Four parts to create, four parts to garden, two parts to this, ten parts. I said, is this a coincidence? Chinese will have, and you see their neck breaking. They're wanting to go coincidence, but they... <laughs> and Karen doesn't want to talk about it. They, they, they struggle. They don't like to admit it. They go, it's not a coincidence. But what the struggle is, it's not just stubbornness. It's not that. For thousands of years, they believed what they've been told. Now think about that. For thousands of years, they believed what they've been told. Even those alive. How many years have we been believing some lies here in America? Evolution's true. Science. You, got, you believe in science. You believe in science. Do you believe science? Right. That's what you're on TV. Every day. You got to believe the science. You got to believe the science. But they write their own science. Evolution is not a true. It's a theory. There's no facts of law to it. But they're going to keep bombarding you with this one thing. It's always on the TV. You got to believe the science. You got to believe the science. You got to believe the science. The more you hear that, doubt everything they say. They're trying to pull something over on you. That ain't interested in believing the science. They'll look at that and they say, Father, you know, they say, My father's knew something. And then we'll go, now if I can go to the next one, I'll go to the next one. But you gotta just gotta pay attention to where they're at. Uh, too fast. Well, it's worth cutting it. Of course, we know what happened there in the garden. After God said, don't eat of the tree, you know, as soon as God said, don't do something, what, what's the devil going to do? He's going to tell you to do it. You know, everybody thinks the devil's super smart. The devil ain't smart. He only, he's, he's in a boundary of what he can do. He's in a box. He's under God's complete control. He can't act outside of God's will. God would just give him enough rope to do certain things. When he wanted to go after Job, he had to get permission from God, did he not? He's not going to do anything outside of what God controls. God lets him do things. A lot of times it's for testing, trials, and tribulation. That's basically what it is. Or sometimes it's about judgments. If we don't listen to God, God will cut him loose. He said, all right, Israel ain't going to listen to me. He cuts the leash. He said, now go get him. All the devil is is God's sick him, dog. Go sick him, sick him. Go, go, get him, get him. That's how he's a hand of judgment. That's all he is. He's not super smart. If he was smart, he'd still be in heaven. Right. Right? Yeah. That shows you how stupid he is. He got, he got, he, he's so close to the throne, he's the one that got kicked out. And you want to claim he's smart? He's an idiot. That's the biggest idiot that's ever walked <laughs> to heaven. If you get kicked out of heaven, I mean, you're stupid. 
Don't give the devil much more credit than he deserves. He does not deserve as much credit. Oh, he, he just, he's got my number. No, he ain't. God's got your number. He said, you ain't going to listen. I'm going to leave loose on you. You got to remember that God's going to, he's in control. The devil don't run this world. God does. All the devil is is it's something he lets loose when it's time to let loose. All right, so look at Genesis 3. And we know some things here that happen. You know, the uh, you know, devil has talked with either in 4 and 5. And, and then look at verse 6. It says, When the woman saw that the tree is good for food and it's pleasant to the eyes and tree to desire to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and give, also, and give to her husband that is also with her there. Okay, and that's the word covet. Okay, the first time somebody coveted something, it had to do with what? Trees. Trees. Okay, who's one that coveted? Woman. A woman under two trees is the word covet. Now, folks, don't get angry at me. Who wrote Who wrote the Bible? God. God. Who wrote that language? It ain't me either. I'm just showing what they knew at the very beginning. A woman under two trees is the word covet. All right? If I can get them to these points here, it's no longer, it's like, my father's new son. My father's new son. This ain't from America. This ain't something that, you know, and they, they're, they're realizing my language, they know the greatness that's in their language, and it's, this is special. This is something my family, my ancestors knew. And if they knew it, I should know it. And see, I don't have to tell them that. Right. They will say it themselves. If my ancestors knew this, I should know it. It's a shame that they left me a road map and I couldn't see it. It's even worse that all people in the world dumb American had to come over there and show me what my language got. See, they don't think too high of America because we're on culture. They got 4,000 years of culture. We're not as cultured as we think. Right. They said, all things American had to show me what my father's left me. And then they just kind of... One of my preachers right now, he says, that, Mr. Mills, we should be the ones telling the world about Jesus. Not you. We should be the ones. You know what? God said, I make you become fishers of men. And really, there's so many things in our language and our culture, and I'm just going to kind of show you one more. But the problem is, is what we do, as we see truth, we got this habit of wanting to hide. You know, you've heard truth Sunday after Sunday, year after year, America's filled with it, or everything in our country shows some things about what our heritage is, but there's an attempt to rewrite everything, to hide everything, you know, and, and give a new look on history and stuff. And of course, I look at verse 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and that they sowed fig leaves, and made themselves apron, and of course, in verse 8, said, the voice of the Lord come walking in the garden, and they hid themselves. This is the word hide, or they hid themselves. Now, this is the word for body. That's the um, outside part here. That's the word body. This top part is the word is. Body is. Now, what's that one part there? Tree. Tree. First time man wanted to hide, he was over there hiding behind that little tree there. Like, that tree's going to hide him. You know what? That's man's problem right now. Man wants to hide. Instead of face the truth. You know, if America don't face the truth and realize... Our fathers left us something. We got more than just a language. Amen. We got a book. Mm -hmm. Now the Chinese, as soon as I show them this, they say, well, Mr. Mills, can I have a Bible? Can I start reading? I want to know what my fathers knew. They want to know. They were, they were about to devour the, that Bible. Now, she, now, my wife and Carol can tell you that they're readaholics. They can, they can about just scan a paper and just about read like that. We get we struggle with Christians read the Bible in one year. They read it three or four times in one year. Asians got that natural desire of wanting to worship and wanting to know truth. They'll read, read, read. 
And then they'll say, you know, Mr. Mills, this book's an Asian book. It's not a Western, this ain't a Western book. You get to read that Old Testament, you'll learn really quick, this ain't a Western book. Right. It's an Asian book. And I could keep you here for another hour just talking about Asian culture and things we overlook. But I'll give you one. You saw that term, chief fathers? What's a chief father? That's one who's in charge of the whole clan. Right. If I call a meeting as chief father, whatever I decide, the whole family must do. That still happens in China today. Whoever's the eldest is the chief, and if he has a, a, something that needs to be done for the family life, everybody has to agree to what the chief just said. You try doing that in America, see what happens. <laughs> you know what happened. Right. World War III have happened. In Asia, that's still common. That's not just China. You know what? They'll see this, and they'll realize, Mr. Mills, we're still hiding. It's time for us to recognize the truth that this is something our fathers knew. And if they knew this, I should know it. You know what? There's things our fathers know, and we ain't practicing in America anymore. What happened in China is happening to America. There's nothing new under the sun. What happened to England is going to happen to us. What happened to Germany is going to happen to us. What happened to all these other countries, we should know better because we're at the very end of it. We can look back and see what the devil's done in all these other places, and we're doing the same thing. You say, well, I'm not doing it. You're allowing it to be done. Well, what can I do? Go out there and build the church. See, if the church will go out there and build itself and become strong again in, in the word and doctrine, you know what? The world, America can correct itself. Republican Party ain't going to save America. Mm -hmm. right. That's what's going to save America, Amen. right? Amen. Now, God will use the conservatives to help, but if it's not based on this, it's going to crumble. Right. We've got to go back to building strong families for God. Mm -hmm. Without a strong family, these children back here have got no hope. Our schools are already just a place for learning everything but truth and, and but education. We're going to have to make changes. And that means we do have to be active in our society. We just can't sit back and watch the world go to hell and say, well, I'm a Christian. I did all I can do. And No, that's not all you can do. You can bring people to church. And the church is supposed to multiply and grow. And the word's supposed to grow. That happened at one time in America. It needs to return. If it doesn't return, what happened in China will happen in America. And no matter how much we hide, it's going to find us. As Pastor come, I'll let him finish up the end of the service. But, you know, don't hide from God. You know, of course, Adam and Eve, they were trying to hide behind those fig leaves, trying to act like they were, you know, really Christians, and they were not. They were not really saved. They, they knew how to do the routine things and play the game. You know what? Are you saved? That's the most important thing. Now, when the Chinese sees this, they'll say, well, Mr. Mills, can I be saved? I said, yeah. And I don't even have to twist their arm. I don't have to force them. They will see this is something their fathers believe. And they will want to know how to be right. And the word righteousness got the word for symbol and I. When I'm one of the lamb, I'm righteous. And when they make coats of skin, they put those coats of skin on. They knew that lamb had died for them. Every day they had a reminder. Because of my sin, this lamb died. See, we don't have many reminders today because we just don't think about it daily. But you know what? Are you saved? Amen. Now, if you're saved, you need to be excited about it. Amen. You need to be serving. And not just serving out there in some home by yourself, but in a local church. If you're saved, you are to be serving. Now, if you're saved and you're serving, then you're sending also. And that's why you had those missionary days. You send the gospel around the world. You're saved to serve and to sin as the gospel goes out. That's what changes the world. Yeah. Oh, we're going to stand. And, uh, yes, we're going to stand this time. And uh, Brother Matt's going to play an invitational hymn for us right now. We'll bow our heads, we'll pray, and then uh, we'll have our invitation time. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and for your blessings. We thank you, God, for the opportunity we've had to be 
in church this morning. We thank you for Brother Mills and the ministry you've given him and his wife, Lord, in China all these years. We pray, you might, God, you might continue to bless the ministry there as they serve you there. And we thank you, God, for the opportunities we have as a church to support them and to be a part of their ministry. Thank you for this message this morning. We ask God you might help us, Lord, to be fishers of men and, Lord, teach us to do so. And, Lord, help us to be those that are busy, Lord, about the Father's business. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heads bowed and eyes closed while he plays right now. And uh, we will... Uh, uh, while we uh, have this invitation time, the altar is open if you need to come and pray. And uh, we've heard uh, a good message here today. We've heard a good... Uh, lesson today about some things that show us that uh, uh, God's truth is everywhere. God's truth is everywhere. And uh, the truth is what the world needs. The truth will set us free. But many people don't see the truth and they sometimes overlook it. They don't notice it. They don't recognize it. And that's why God put us here. That's why God saved us. Is to be those who would help those to find the truth and to present the truth to them. Let's pray that God would help us to be uh, fishers of men and be on the lookout for souls and to be those who exercise our freedom in this country to get the gospel out, to the print page and gospel tracts, invite folks to church, what it might be. But you do your best to reach others for Christ. I'm just going to pray now. You ask God to help you in this matter. If that's a problem that you're having, if you're not, a, if you're not fishing for men, if you're not looking for people, then um, we need to be. We need to be. And ask God to give you some opportunities. Ask God to give you opportunities. And I bet He will. I bet He'll give you an opportunity. Let's just pray for a little bit before we dismiss.